So, quickly I will go through electrical characterization, laboratory and field investigations which are being done by people, state of the art, electrical properties, resistivity and dielectric constant measurements and uh, ohmic conduction in geometrical because this is something interesting people have to talk about some of the questions go like this. Then electrical impedance concept followed by basic models which you are asking how current flows, how heat flows and all those things. Determination of electrical properties and then uh, most of this work was done by Azaz, my masters student. How flow of AC takes place in the geometrias, we developed basic models and equivalent circuits to answer your question whether electrical measurements can differentiate between coarse and fine grain material number one. Number two between contaminated and uncontaminated state of the material, both can be done, we will show you how it is done. So, I developed a method, but unfortunately nobody challenged that, they accepted it. So, I do not know how good or bad this method is, because I, we did not get any comments and criticism of this work. So, this answers your, I think you think that I will be answering your questions also, no? And somebody else was asking, yes, okay, let us see. So, there are two types of laboratory methods which are known as two electrode method and four electrode method. Uh, I do not know whether you have heard these names or not surface network analyzer, impedance analyzer, and LCR meter. So, as the name suggests, surface network analyzer analyzes the network of electrical circuit. So, when you analyze the electric circuit, basically you have three components in mind, resistance, capacitance and inductance. Now, this equipment LCR meter gives you these three parameters directly. Impedance analyzer will also give you these three parameters indirectly, but nowadays you have software which can convert the measurements into different components of inductance, capacitance and resistance LCR. So, these two electrode and four electrode methods have been devised depending upon what parameter you want to study and for what application and sometimes feasibility of the method also. I am sorry for the distortion of the figure. What we do is we take a sample, we put the electrodes, we apply voltage and then we measure the current clear or you apply the power across the plates of the sample. And these are the electrodes made up of either stainless steel or sometimes gold, sometimes silver depending upon the material which you are using and then you measure the voltage across this point. Using this technique, I have done most of the consultation for the companies which make tiles of different types. I do not know how much amount of money it might have generated. There was a time when in India, there were so many companies which were making tiles, Johnson tiles is a good example, different types of refractory materials, different type of bricks, different types of insulating blocks, different type of blocks which are used in atomic reactor shells. So, these are the applications where I did so much of consulting and there was a time when was, most of the bridges which have been done in Bombay city and other places where you are using reinforced earth. because one of the requirements of the bridges is nobody should get short circuited. So, when a vehicle passes, it should never get short circuited. That means, the electrical resistivity of the system should be optimal. The type of soil which you are using in the fill of the geosynthetic material or geogrids should follow the norms of electrical resistivities, clear. So, there are guidelines. If a system is highly conducting, what is going to happen? It is not a good idea to use this type of material in, in infrastructure systems, fine. Similarly, foundation isolation when you do different type of uh, you know thundering, lightning isolation which you do for the buildings, what type of stone should be used, what type of brick should be used, what type of mortar should be used, what type of paint surfaces should be used. So, all these things were tested by using this type of methods. So, in two electrode methods, we have two electrodes which are kept the sample is kept sandwiched in between and then you optimize the voltage sorry optimize the power supply and measure the voltage and from this voltage you can compute the resistance and this resistance will tell you whether this material is suitable or not which is an indicative of its porosity 
and density clear so you must have noticed that obtaining porosity of the material is not a very simple task those of you who have been exposed to mercury integer porosimetry will realize this is an extremely complicated and expensive method which everybody cannot afford so the whole idea was can mip be simplified in such a way that i can obtain the porosity answer is yes and this work was done by paresha and by one of my postdoc kai bithu sir and dr naidu where we have developed methodologies for different matrices how diffusion of contaminant takes place through them and using this method we have obtained the porosity and that was a very good method to determine the porosity of a porous media by using contaminant transport techniques fine i'll talk about this then this is a four electrode method yeah sorry so another thing is in two electrode method the problem is if you are using dc this temperature of the sample will keep on increasing which you would not like to do and hence you should apply ac all right no power loss current to overcome this problems what they do is they use two electrode method but they put two electrodes in the middle of the sample and these electrodes need not to be inserted into the sample they could be surface electrodes so what we do is we take a sample we apply uh, current across it and then we measure voltage within the length of the sample clear this is nothing but your simple soil profiling method wenner's arrangement so you apply current to the outer electrodes and measure the voltage in the middle of the two electrodes is it not so current is applied from outside and then you measure the voltage which is getting generated is a typical wenner arrangement so this has been manipulated in such a way now this helps you in a way that the effect of electrode is not getting felt at the point of measurement and hence four electrode methods are better as compared to two electrode methods this is what i was talking about the consolidation test which was done in a oidometer ring by putting lot of electrodes so you can see there is a series of electrodes which is inserted into the consolidometer ring and we can plot e versus log sigma prime similarly we can plot resistivity resistivity versus sigma prime that means the void ratio and resistivity will get linked together so i can do a complete instrumentation where i need not to check how consolidation process is you know happening in the sample and i can interface it with a display unit and on my pc i can see how consolidation process is taking place because the resistance of the system is changing void ratio is changing for applied value of sigma prime so these type of things nowadays people are trying to do and they are coming out with new new uh, equipments in the market this is what is known as four uh, probe resistivity cells which have been created uh, this is the equipment which was developed by my master's student reshma uh, i was talking about this electrical probe where we have a probe which is attached with four electrodes these are the electrodes one is this electrode second third and fourth and then the electrodes have been spaced so that they don't get short circuited with each other you put ebonite ring so this is one ebonite ring another ebonite ring third fourth and so on and because this is to be inserted into the soil mass which is compacted we made it tapered and sharp edge you insert it in the soil apply current across the outer electrodes this one and this one and measure the voltage across these two so this gives you the electrical properties of the soils a very simple method it works so you can go through the papers written by shridip reshma madhuri and all those people who have worked in this area this was a box which we developed uh, this also a very interesting method of finding out the electrical density of the soils where we took you know several point electrode measurements of the soil sample so in this box soil sample is contained inside and at each and every face there are three electrodes and then we measure the impedance across these electrodes and then we have derived lot of parameters which are of use to uh, engineering profession particularly the saturation so this is where you will see that calibration has been done by using a standard fluid 
which was filled inside and uh, by using simple equations uh, you can derive a relationship between resistivity and the resistance of the material and so on. Uh, there was something very interesting which was done by most probably Madhuri, one of my masters student where we compartmentalized the soil samples or the box uh, because we wanted to study what is the effect of distance between the two electrode plates. So, this is a sacrificial layer where you can make a sample first and then you can manipulate the distance between the two electrodes by shifting the compartment size. And these are like basic things which you are doing earlier. This is how the calibration is being done. Somebody was asking the question how the calibration will be done. So, most of the time all these equipments are calibrated by using sodium chloride solution. So, you immerse the electrical probe and the residue box can be filled up with the sodium chloride solution and then you do the measurement and you will realize this is current versus voltage relationship. Uh, which will give you the inverse of the resistance and so on and then ultimately we developed relationships between resistivity as a function of saturation of the soil. When you do triaxial testing the biggest question is what is the state of saturation of the sample. So, if you can put a sensor there and you can measure the state of saturation it may help you in getting the parameters from or the saturation state of the material before you start doing triaxial test. This is the work which was done by Sridip where he linked resistivity with the saturation and then he linked electrical resistivity with thermal resistivity. So, the idea is very simple if you pass current through the sample it gets heated up thermal properties become very important. So, if you measure one of the two you can get the another one is the interlinking between the electrical resistivity and the thermal resistivity. So, these type of things were developed quite a lot they are all published in different journals you can just go through it and these coefficient which I am using here are related to the fines content and the saturation of the soil sample. Uh, now, talking a little bit about what type of field investigations are prevalent in today's world you were talking somebody was talking about GPR yeah, you were talking about GPR. So, GPR is also based on electromagnetic waves, but the problem is that penetration depth is a big issue. So, then you have to use different type of antennas either low frequency or high frequency fine. So, the guys who are in mining engineering particularly or those who are designing runways or those who are detecting the depth of power cables or underground utilities particularly army uses it quite a lot for finding out the mines land mines you know which might be there and that could be very very detrimental to the people. So, if you want to locate where the line mines are uh, GPRs are the best thing. So, GPRs are used for finding out the fractures on the surface of runways or the concrete surface. In geotechnical engineering somehow GPR has not been used much because as somebody pointed out uh, saturation, clay content, moisture content, water table are the four things which make GPR you know not a good technique to be adopted for geotechnical engineering applications. TDRs are used for different applications, time domain refractometry capacitance sensors are used, portable dielectric probes are used, electrical conducting probes are used. There is a beautiful symposium which was done on TDR techniques in 2001 you should link you should get go through this link and see what type of you know new things are happening in geomechanics. Particularly for designing early warning systems in the landslide prone areas where uh, you drill a borehole and and put a uh, what do you call it as a TDR wire. Now, what will happen is the moment this whole block has a tendency to slide you know the wire gets distorted and sorry and distortion means that its resistance is going to change and this resistance can be measured and the whole waveform can be captured in a screen 
and then you can find out you know whether the landslide is going to take place or not. I had written a proposal long back to Konkan Railway when this Goa Bombay route was being done and I wanted to develop these type of things to create early warning system because in the initial phases of the Konkan Railways the biggest problem was heavy rains and uh, a lot of big boulders used to slide and they used to come on the railway track blocking the movement of the trains and all. But somehow initiative was not uh, award, rewarded, nobody was interested those days to help researchers. Now world has changed and uh, there is a lot of money involved and it is becoming easy to get money from different sources as compared to the days when we started our research career when research was not really was respected much. But you should be happy that world has changed and now research attracts lot of money and respect. So whenever you get time please go through it. There are several applications of TDRs which have been mentioned in this uh, symposium. There are some very good papers on this. Now this part of the thesis if you are really sorry if this part of the lecture which I am talking about if you are very much eager to learn uh, read Paresh Shah's thesis uh, where we have uh, talked up great in great details what type of techniques can be utilized to measure what and a glimpse of that is given over here. Uh, when you are working in different frequency ranges, what are the parameters you can determine? So, just a quick account of it, water content can be talked about, you are talking about orientation of the grain, somebody was talking about, you were talking about in, in the direct shear test. So, soil structure can be studied, particle orientation can be talked about, electrolytic effects can be studied. This was done in 1973, you know people have been working since long in this area and 1933 they talked about water content determination by using electrical properties. Porosity, permeability, conductivity, percentage clay content, you were talking about fine grain coarse grain materials. So, they have used this technique, electrical dispersion in soils, you know how the electric constant changes over a frequency, we will talk about this. And in 1980s and 85 uh, people have talked about water content, soil liquefaction and relative density of the soils. I will uh, skip this part because most of you are aware of this and I have discussed also in the earlier lecture. Basically ohmic conduction is current equal to resistivity, conductivity into voltage. So then all these concepts can be utilized to obtain void ratio, degree of saturation, grain size, shape, orientation, pore structure, nature of the pore fluid and its conductivity. And uh, when you talk about the electrical conduction through fine grain materials, it becomes very, very complicated, but I will show you something which we could do. So, in the simplest possible form, uh, electrical impedance is defined as Z which is V upon T, sorry V upon I. So, V upon I is the R resistance. So, when you measure resistance under DC influence, we depict it as R. But when you measure resistance under AC influence, then this is known as impedance Z. So, this is voltage with respect to time divided by current with respect to time and hence this becomes a complex function R minus Jx. So, I will show you how these you know R is going to be a real part and X is going to be imaginary part of the impedance. You must have done your mathematics course real imaginary components of uh, you know any expression, algebraic expression. So, the basic model which we use is we consider only resistance and capacitance of the soil and the geomaterials. The reason is we ignore L. Most of the soils unless they are having lot of iron into it will not show inductance and hence inductance can be ignored. So, to begin with uh, what people have done is now I am answering your question uh, how would you differentiate between the state of the material and the type of the soil. So, now this point onwards I am answering your point. 
So, the basic model we consider is that there is a resistance and capacitance which is attached in parallel and this defines the soil mass. So, R is the imaginary component is 0. So, impedance will be R. We call admittance which is the inverse of the impedance as 1 upon R y. Inductor will induce omega L and capacitor will include minus 1 upon j omega c. This you must have studied in your 10 plus 2 electronics. So, when you have elements in series and in parallel, you can solve this problem, is it not? You have done all these things, capacitors in series, capacitors in parallel, resistance in series, resistance in parallel and so on. So, you can find out z equivalent and y equivalent. So, z is impedance, equivalent impedance of the material. So, now the question is how would you determine the electrical properties of the soils and what we did in the lab. So, we made small sample holders, we call them, call them as impedance cells. So, it is a box, oh sorry, it is a box and this is where we fill the sand or the soil and then these are the two electrodes which are attached to this. The third dimension would be the length of the box and then we can measure impedance of the soil mass. Sometimes when we are dealing with the liquids, we cannot keep them like this or we can keep them like this. We can go for a horizontal sample holder where we can have a specimen connected with two electrodes. These are two electrodes and sandwiched between them is the sample. This is how the samples look like. This is the impedance cell which was done by by SS and this is the trine FM which is known as uh, frequency domain, sorry TDI, time domain reflectometer. So, what you will observe is that uh, in this sample, we are measuring the moisture content with the help of a TDR probe. So, you make the sample first, insert the TDR probe and read the dielectric constant and volumetric moisture content of the sample. This type of setup has been used which is known as impedance analyzer. Now, we have in our lab, but when Azaz was working, we had to use metallurgy department facilities to do these studies. These are very expensive tools. A typical impedance analyzer will cost you now 50 lakhs minimum, 50 to 60 lakhs. And uh, any TDR unit will not be less than 5 to 7 to 8 lakhs, 10 lakhs. These are very expensive tools. Now, just to tell you very quickly what is done and it may help you in analyzing it further. Suppose, if I keep a sample bit sandwiched between the two electrodes, this becomes my specimen. So, this specimen I am representing as a C RC circuit and two electrodes which are sandwiching the specimen are also being depicted as RC circuits. So, basically the representation of the sample would be electrodes and the soil. So, two parallel circuits are sorry three parallel circuits are in series because we are passing current through this electrode and it comes out of this electrode. So, everything is in series 1, 2, 3. So, we have three components. Now, once you have made a sample, you have tested the impedance, the question is how to analyze it. We take help of a graph which is known as Nixt plane or sometimes we use coal coal. So, if you have done a course on electronics, you can easily find out that these terms are familiar to you. Uh, we call coal coal plot, Nixt plot, Bode's plot where the imaginary impedance is plotted with respect to real impedance. This is the simple method of plotting things. And then what half circles or the semi circles you are observing here correspond to the materials which you are testing. 
So, if you have a close look at this, you will find that at this point the frequency is maximum and at this point the frequency is minimum. So, when you are working at a low frequency, the system is going to be resistive. When you are working at very high frequency, the system is going to be very low resistive. So, these two methods are used to analyze the results which we get from impedance analysis or electrical measurements. <coughs> so, the interpretation is like this. I think this answers your question. You can see here, uh, we could differentiate very easily between coarse, medium and fine sands because their graphs are extremely you know distinguishable, very distinct. So, if you do electrical measurements of coarse sand, fine sands and medium sands, you will get three fingerprints alright, very peculiar response of the material and this response is coming out mostly because of the minerals which are present in the soil, please do not forget and the pore solution and the porosity, everything put together and the bacterial activity, fine. So, ultimately what you get is when you do electrical measurements, you get the holistic picture of the sample coming back to your point. Now, it is your way of analyzing that how would you shed out other effects and go ahead with one effect or superimpose several effects on the parameter which you are measuring. So, this becomes synthesis of data, there is no guidebook for that unfortunately, but we have done lot of basic work and if you read that work, you can become a good scientist in this area and you can go ahead without thinking anything about it. Very recently, uh, Dr. Naidu has guided one PhD thesis, so you see the papers by Saranya and she has published one paper where she is differentiating between different type of soils by using impedance spectroscopy. Now, I do not work in this area anymore, I have stopped working and this area is left <laughs> to be fathomed by my students because I do not find any thrill in this, having done this much and I realize that I should come out of it. I am not doing any fundamental research in electrical properties as such because things have become more deterministic and thrill and challenge is less. But yes, some of them like uh, she is using these techniques for determining some processes which are taking place in the soil mass. So, this is what uh, another representation would be uh, as I was talking about the Bode plot where uh, you, this is the phase angle, phi is the phase angle and phase angle is defined as the ratio between the impedance in the uh, you know real part divided by impedance in the imaginary part. So, this is the tan phi component and then you can plot phi as a function of frequency of AC and the minimal point is normally considered as the point of optimal and that gives you the parametric uh, response. This was a very fundamental work which was done by Azaz and we published it in uh, some journals which talks about how current migrates through the soils and these are the basic models which we have defined by using uh, you know equivalent circuits. So, when you have dry soils, wet soils, saturated soils, unsaturated soils, how current will migrate through it. The basic model is that uh, the current migration could be from grain to void to grain or grain to grain to void to grain to grain to void and so on or it could be from wide, 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 wide depending upon if you have a conducting fluid. This is what is known as short circuiting. So, these are hypothetical situations. So, we have talked about different scenarios where if the whether this component of electrical path is prevalent or this is prevalent and this is prevalent. So, these are the very basic work which was done by Azaz at master's level, I mean <laughs> unbelievable. And this was the first time somebody defined the flow of current through the geomaterials. Uh, just to differentiate between the two, if I talk about partially saturated material, you have electrodes here, electrode here and then you are passing current. So, the current could go through the grains to the air to the grains, grain, grain, grain so on is a conducting path. You could have a current passage through the soil grains passing through the pore solution 
voids and so on. So, like this type of modeling was done assuming different paths of current migration in the geomaterials. How do you find this? Hmm? Well, it does not matter whether it is a straight or a curved or a non-linear path. Ultimately, the idea is these are the philosophical way or conceptualization of how current will migrate through the system. Because inside the soil mass very difficult to tell whether it is a straight path or it is a curved path or so on that goes too much into the microscopic level. So, this is the situation when you are talking about the saturated system. So, when you have saturated system there could be a short circuiting of the grains and the current can migrate through the pore solution itself or current may migrate through the grains of the soil itself or the third situation could be grain to pore solution to grain to pore solution to grain to pore solution and so on. Now, why I am trying to show you all these things is when you have these type of models there is a very interesting philosophy which comes uh, in mind and the philosophy is two grains when they sit close to each other they form a pore and then this is the genesis of unsaturated soil mechanics. The second interpretation could be two pores sorry two grains when they come close to each other they are acting as a parallel plate of the capacitors and the fluid is contained inside. The third hypothesis could be that the grain of the soil itself might be acting as a parallel plate capacitor and whatever inclusions and the fractures and the micro fractures are within the grain might become a fluid or a dielectric material which is making each grain as a capacitor. So, this is the best way to talk about the micro mechanisms which prevail in geomaterials are you realizing. So, that is the most critical way or interesting way to look at how micro mechanisms are going to take place in systems which contain different geomaterials. So, we did experiments to determine dry soil, wet soil, pore solution state of the material and this is the paper I was talking about in ASTM international a simple methodology for determining electrical conductivity of soils. I uh, will skip this in case you are interested you can just go through that paper. This is what I was talking about the porosity how you can check the porosity of the geomaterials is what is known as generalized Archie's law. So, basically this equation can be utilized to get the relationship between pore fluid conductivity, the volumetric moisture theta and the overall conductivity. Then sometimes people use a term which is known as formation factor FF. In geotechnical engineering we do not use this term much, but those who are into petroleum geophysics they try to study the history of formation of sediments, how the layers are formed, whether the perpendicular to the plane or parallel to the plane of deposition the conductivity is more or less. The way we define our K and KP terms clear. So, K and K p can also be defined by using these electrical if you are doing good instrumentation. So, we gave lot of generalized relationship which were published in again ASTM generalized Archie's law for estimation of soil electrical conductivity. If you wish to work in this area you can refer to these papers. Now, this is a typical graph which shows how electrical dispersion takes place in geomaterials. So, this is the dielectric constant k and a function of frequency and remember we have gone up to 10 power 7 hertz. So, 10 power 7 hertz is 1 10 mega hertz. So, this was the limitation, but at the same time it depends upon what parameter you want to measure at what frequency. So, nowadays we have tools which can take you up to gigahertz range. 10 gigahertz and so on. So, then you can expand this uh, you know dispersion of electrical flux in the system up to 2 to 10 gigahertz. Most of the TDRs work in this range where the frequency of AC current would be 
10 power 9 hertz, 10 power 10 hertz. So, it depends upon the measurements which you want to do. Suppose if I want to see the micro cracks which are appearing in the concrete, then TDR which works in gigahertz range is going to be a better solution rather than the sands which can easily be detected or studied by using low frequency coin. So, what it shows is that the higher the frequency lower the dielectric constant that means when you are using a higher frequency AC current the system which was initially non-conducting becomes conducting. this is correct. So, higher frequency more conducting material lesser dielectric constant. So, it depends now how you would like to interpret the results. Then we devised a method for determining hygroscopic moisture content of the soil also and this is again a ASTM paper which you can read through and uh, I suggest if you are interested please go through this paper where we have used a specific surface area, cation exchange capacity, liquid limit, shrinkage potential, conductivity, dielectric constant to define the hygroscopic moisture of the soils. Hygroscopic moisture content nobody had detected, I mean they just used to use a empirical method, but this was the first study where we used uh, different scientific techniques to understand what hygroscopic moisture is all about. Then we talked about soil suction also by using electrical measurements. So, the premise was that suction is a function of moisture content, conductivity is a function of moisture content and hence conductivity should be a function of suction. That was a very breakthrough work like this paper was a uh, very fundamental paper which was published by I think Krishnaya and uh, maybe that batch Kas Thakur and all. So, this is a typical theta versus psi relationship which is known as a soil water characteristic curve and then we correlated this with conductivity versus suction. So, it is very simple now you take a soil sample measure its conductivity and then you know the suction. You need not to buy very costly equipments because suction measuring devices are extremely expensive, extremely expensive. So, every, everybody cannot really procure them and use them in the laboratory. So, in fact, Dr. Sridip came out with a mathematical algorithm where he says that you need not to measure suction. By using simple mathematical models, you can estimate suction and that algorithm he has published in one of the papers. Well, these are the relationships which people use who work in the field of moisture content determination and online sensing of moisture. So, if you the k is a dielectric constant and theta is the volumetric moisture content. So, there is a famous equation which is known as TOPS relationship which relates volumetric moisture with the dielectric constant. Uh, Susha's thesis is the latest work which you should read in case you are interested in learning what all this is about and uh, uh, that most of the papers which she has published are related to this philosophy that uh, multi-phase system, single phase system, how to differentiate between them, how to measure the moisture content. This work is also published by Rohini and myself in Methodology for Determination of Electrical Properties of Soils in ASTM way back in 2004. This is something very interesting we were working on because soils are multi-phase systems. So, when you say they are multi-phase means their mineralogical composition is different and their volumetric moisture content is different. So, this is the first time when we introduce the concept of pore air in the soil matrix and then we were talking about equivalent dielectric constant of soil matrix and remember this soil matrix will be having minerals of different types air and pore solution clear and if you are very much fascinated bacterial activity then you have to include one more component of soil bacterial dielectric constant 
So, this will become a very complete picture as on date and which will not be challenged by anybody, but then this work has to be done by someone, it has to be carried forward. This paper we published in uh, Journal of STM, Generalized Relationship for Estimating Dielectric Constant of Soils. Now, based on all these measurements, most of the sensors have been developed because what sensors will do is they will display a number which will be dependent upon the dielectric constant clear and theta, so saturation. So, this type of electronic interfaces have been developed. Then this was a very interesting theme on which I was working until some time back that you know the whole idea of environmental geomechanics was I wanted to study the disturbance response of the geomaterial to a disturbance which is being imposed on it. So, then I manipulated this idea in such a way that I will employ electrical stimulus on a soil sample, on a rock sample and I will try to see what is the response of the material, fine. So, this was the general philosophy on which you are working. So, this is a electromagnetic wave of certain frequency and material attributes are a specific gravity, volumetric moisture content, density, void ratio, saturation and the response is nothing but impedance, electrical properties, fine. So, if you know the electrical properties or the response spectra, you can and if you know what is that you are applying the type of disturbance, you can analyze the material better. So, this was the philosophy. Now, this part answers your question, uh, what we did is we tried to model the soil mass as an equivalent electronic circuit. Is the statement clear? Each and every component of the soil we wanted to be included as a electronic component in the circuit. So, we started with simple RC circuit and what we observed is when you experimentally measure this is the response and if you use this RC circuit, this is the result, a lot of discrepancy between the two. So, we modified these type of electronic signals and from this point onwards, it goes too much into the electronics and the material science. So, what we did is we tried to see which combination of R and C is going to give you the best possible match between experimental results and theoretically obtained results. Those of you who are involved in equivalent circuit design will realize that switching over from here to here is a matter of few months. Every day you have to keep on trying, then one day you might get a solution which might be a no parallax between experimental and theoretical results. When Azaz was working for his MTech thesis, from this point to this point he came out in 8 months. So, every day he used to come to the lab and try different different compositions, but now we have realized that how these type of electronic circuits can be made. So, you will see that this is the plate electrode, this is also the plate electrode and this is the soil which is encapsulated in between in a sample holder. So, this soil has been modeled as one resistance, one resistance and one capacitor. So, the hypothesis is that the state of the material can be studied by two resistances and a capacitor. Now, it does not matter what material I am working on. It could be saturated soil, it could be unsaturated soil, it could be fine grain, coarse grain, soil with bacteria. Soil with no bacteria, soil with contamination and soil with no contamination. But the question is how would you train your circuit? So, we did some experiments and uh, we got some results where we have shown that the volumetric moisture content decrease increases, the resistivity decreases. 
and this is where we brought in the concepts of grain boundary capacitance and resistance. When two grains sit together, what type of capacitive uh, response the system gives. So, now I think you can visualize, you have a very loose material, you are compacting it, what is going to happen? The grains are going to come closer and closer and the logic says capacitance is inversely proportional to distance of the plates of the electrodes. So, when you are compacting what is happening? The distance between the plates is decreasing and the capacitive value is going to shoot up. You got the point? Logic says clays cannot be compacted, sands can be compacted. You got an answer. So, looking at the behavior of the impedance graph, you can make out from that whether you are working on fine grain materials or coarse grain materials. So, this is what our hunch was that you can use this type of um, responses for getting a overall picture of the state of the material. But unfortunately, I stopped my research at this point long back and with the hope that somebody will carry it forward. But again time is coming when uh, we have we are realizing that if you have to move ahead in this area, these studies have to be revived. My idea was to give you a general feel of uh, what electrical properties of soils are and what their applications is and where the knowledge is heading. This is what I wanted. So, with this I will stop here and I uh, will wind up this course also in environmental geomechanics. I hope uh, you like this course and uh, I must have given you several ideas to work on. It will be good to see if you pursue these ideas or maybe develop your new ideas and try to answer these questions which for which we do not have any answer right now. This course I am sure must have given you a feel that very little is known and I do not know how much amount of knowledge is still undisseminated. So, this is where I find that uh, one life is less to address each and every question related to geomechanics and uh, that too when it is a single man's effort. So, this type of study should be done by several people and uh, they should show the limitations or you know suitability of these techniques. So, thank you very much.